Before we get into the video, I'd like to let y'all know that I'm doing a giveaway for an LTI Argo Atlas. In order to participate, all you have to do is be subscribed and leave a comment in any video between now and the end of December. Let's get into this video. <laughs> Love you too. <laughs> uh, excited to be here. Uh, in case you don't know me and you weren't listening to Jerry there, which I do quite a lot. Uh, my name's John Crew. I'm the vehicle director. Uh, my name's Ben Curtis. I'm the vehicle art director. Uh, and the clicker is not working. <laughs> oh, so if you've got technical difficulties... You have, you have to do a dance, John. There we oh, go. There we go, there we go, we're good. Right. So, today we're going to be talking about the vehicles to build your universe. And for those of you that watched the previous presentation, which is awesome, about base building and crafting, you should be familiar with the <laughs> construction grav cart. <laughs> and you've seen how this works. You might be wondering, well, if I've got this, why do I need some vehicles to do things? And I know there's going to be some of you that will be perfectly prepared to go push this thing hundreds of kilometers out of the garages at New Babbage. But realistically, you're going to need a ship to put it in it can't carry supplies by itself, so you're going to need to put supplies in the ship, move them. And it has small drones. And that's the key aspect there. It has two small drones on board. Uh, and drones will have sizes. OK, so, yeah, basically everything you're going to be building in Star Citizen has its, its size class. You know, a lot of you are familiar with how we class our ships and, and a lot of other things in our game. So we ranges from you know, small all the way up to large and extra large. And our drones kind of fall into those classes as well. But you know, what does it really mean, the difference between you know, what's a small drone, what's a large drone, what's a larger than large and extra large, and so on? And basically, you know, a, a medium drone, for example, can build any structure up to a medium size. So it can build smalls, mediums, and it will be able to build small structures faster than what a small drone would. So the size makes a difference, depending on how big you want to go. But the drones also scale in, um, they scale in numbers, in that you know, one drone can only make one structure at a time. So the grab cart's got two drones on it, so it'll be able to create two small structures. But a medium or, you know, a, if you've got a vehicle that carries multiple drones, you can craft a lot more structures, a lot bigger sizes. And that's kind of really the key to kind of like the upgrade path through the kind of drone sizes. So we've had a look at the, the small. So what, what, what's next? What do you want to build? A medium. So I know some of you have already seen it, but, you know, this is the CSV from Argo. So launching today is the very first ground vehicle from Argo, the construction support vehicle, CSV. Uh, so this specialized chassis is developed to take on all the conditions on all our planets. It's a little rugged beast that really does just go everywhere. Uh, and if you're constructing a new settlement, there's two things you need. You need drones to build it. You need supplies to supply the drones to build it. And that's why the CSV comes in two variants. So we have the CSV FM, which stands for fabrication module. So this has two medium drones on board. Uh, and we built it to fit in as many vehicles as we could practically get it to fit in. So it fits in vehicles from a cutlass black upwards. It's approximately, and everyone always asks me what ship fits in what, and I'd lose track of it all the time. Uh, it's about the size of a tumbrel cyclone. So if you can put a cyclone in a vehicle, you could put one of these in it. Um, obviously, two medium drones on board, and then it has an internal storage tank for resources. So it has a very small uh, version of a freight elevator built into the back of it. So you feed it one SCU crates. It absorbs them into the holding tank on board, and then the drones will come back to the vehicle to refill. And it also has a size zero serial generator on board for a bit of added protection. What happens when you run out of resources? This is where the CSV SM for supply model comes in. So the second CSV-based vehicle in the game, uh, and this has a traditional four SEU cargo grid on the back. So four one SEU boxes, two two SEU boxes, one four SEU box. Depending on what you buy, you can use this to bring it and move it around. So this is the perfect companion vehicle to the CSV-FM. 
said that. Shield generator as well. Moves about 28 meters a second. I cannot, my brain is fried. I can't remember what that is in miles per hour or kilometers per hour. And it is available right now to drive in SC Alpha 324.2. Uh, available at playerc.csv. So now, let's take a little closer look at the vehicle, and Ben's going to go through it. Okay, so what we're seeing here is the in-game version of the CSV. It's complete with its four SCU of cargo up on the rear. And I think the CSV kind of really builds on what Argo is known for as a manufacturer. It's got those kind of like really you know, kind of hard industrial looks. And I think it helps it kind of feel at home on any build site. All of its components are you know, easily accessible. And I think the exterior is like real dominating factory, so it's kind of large all-terrain wheels. And then that's kind of backed up by you know, just simple, smooth, sleek lines. We've got the front-loading cab that puts all the controls kind of right in the kind of you know, where the player needs them. And I think that's one of the keys to the ship as a whole, or the vehicle as a whole, sorry, is it's you know, simple, it's purposeful, it's functional. And I think that just kind of you know, just helps it to kind of feel part of that Argo family. But, but what if you want to go bigger? Bigger? Bigger. OK. So introducing the Star Lancer family. So yeah, the Star Lancer is basically a whole new family of vehicles um, you know, from, from MISC. And, and these are covering a, a range of different roles. Today, we're going to be talking about the first three, which are the build, which kind of makes sense. And that basically is for all your large structural construction needs. We have the TAC, which is going to be for people that want a little bit more um, defensive or offensive excursions in our universe. And then we have the MAX, which is a dedicated hauler, but it can still pack a bit of a punch. So we're going to take a bit of a closer look at all of them today. We're going to start off with the build. So this is the start of build from the outside. Uh, the key thing to take away here <laughs> is you'll see it has the drone bays on each side. And then it has the drone resupply arms for allowing the drones to come back and resupply. Inside that room, you have the drone control center. So you have a single station inside, and this is where you control all your drones from, much like Luke showed you in the uh, previous presentation. So there are two large drones held on each side of the room, so four large drones in total. And then there are two filler stations right at the front here. And these each hold 16 SEU of capacity, which can then go and load the internal resource tank to feed the drones. Drones that will then be deployed out of their little secret garages. Uh, and they go off and do what you've asked them to do. When they need to resupply, they will come back sit on these arms, suck up their resources that they need, carry on their day. That's the really important thing here is that all these base building vehicles have enough storage on board to supply your drones. Obviously, if you're going to build a million things on your base, you're going to run out. But we want you to be able to have these vehicles and have knowledge that you're not going to be doing endless cargo runs initially to build your foundation your base. You'll be able to build your base and have storage on that eventually. But these all get you going in the short term. So let's have a quick go over the stats. It holds four large construction drones. It's 83 meters long, 52 meters wide, 15 tall. I uh, saw lots of rumors and chatters that people thought this was freelancer size. It is not. It is significantly larger than the Constellation and Corsair. It's almost 600i in size, so it is a, a big ship. Two S-4 guns for the pilots, 16 missiles, remote turrets, and then 128 SU of cargo capacity in the build specifically. But what if you don't want to build stuff? What if, like me, you just want to burn stuff and destroy stuff? So introducing the Starlance attack. So like I say, this, this is designed to be a bit, bit more aggression into the verse. 
So I think the first thing you're going to notice um, is the kind of the dual man size five turrets. Now these give much, much better kind of broadside coverage from any of the other variants. And then on top, we also have like a dedicated hangar that has been specifically designed to fit a Mirai Fury inside. And I'm sure we will see plenty of other ships try to be fitted inside. Um, <laughs> Success, yeah. Or not. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. And uh, I think John's going to run you through the interior now. So, yeah, let's have a look over the tack from uh, outside to in. So, this is the tack in its default paint, so sort of military drab grey. Then, internally, uh, obviously, Ben talked about the size 5 turrets. Uh, then, we have some drop seats behind, and these are on a deployable ramp, so you can do some ground assault. They will drop out down. If you're doing a bit of ground assault, Chances are someone's probably going to get injured. So there is an onboard medical facility directly behind there with two tier three medical beds. Uh, ups upstairs, obviously, there is the Fury hangar. Uh, behind that is engineering. And then forward of the hangar is the refactored habitation and mess hall area, which is specific to the TAC, just because there's so much other stuff crammed in there. We had to redo the upstairs of it, basically, to fit that in. And we'll go over the, the more normal layout shortly. OK, so yeah, to sum up, I think you know, the tax obviously going to bring a lot more firepower from the other variants. Um, its shield's been boosted up to uh, two, two size three shield generators. Um, it's got the med bay with the tier three med beds, uh, drop seats, it's got the hangar, and it's still able to carry up to 96 SCU of cargo. And you can secure yours today by going to play.se forward slash Starlance attack. Okay, so I think you would kind of hopefully agree that was a pretty great kind of trailer for the Star Lancer Max. And as you can kind of see, we're, we're just putting the finishing touches on that now. Um, so, yeah, we're just getting it all done, all ready for its launch at IAE. Um, we will take a little bit of a closer look at it now. I think the Star Lancer kind of really fully encapsulates MISC's kind of ability to create beautiful ships. It's got this bulbous design that really helps to kind of convey its underlying, underlying structure and its underlying strength. I think when the engineers were trying to kind of put this together, um, they were thinking about what, what's, what's useful, what's great. And one of the things that we thought about was this deployable cargo grid that just brings the cargo down to the ground, makes it much easier for loading and unloading. And they also wanted to put the kind of the crew, you know, they wanted to put what was important for them. So they've added a lot of windows out so the crew can see out into the verse. And it's one of the things that we know people like, is being able to have these kind of little windows out into space. 
And then above the kind of main habitation area, we've got these big skylights, and they just allow kind of like more natural light to cast down into the, the cruise area. For a bit more protection, you've got uh, eight size three missiles at front, and then a further eight on top. And these are backed up by uh, a set of size four remote turrets, both front and rear, that give good topside coverage. And then finally, when we get to the front, you'll see we have a further set of size four gimbaled weapons. And again, these just kind of help to fill in those blind spots. I think as a whole, I think you know, the engineers or MISC have done an exceptional job in creating a vehicle that kind of fully encapsulates um, the functionality needed while still ensuring that the crew's kind of well-being and livelihood is protected. It's all in a package that kind of really dominates the sky and I think it really shows off MISC's ability to deliver kind of quite beautiful ships. Right, so... Don't worry, this is not an Origin 404 moment happening here. So let's have a look inside the Starlancer Max now. So, love it or hate it, we love it. The MISC traditional letterbox view is back. Uh, at the front of the ship, you have the pilot co-pilot seat with two support stations at the rear. These are the ones that control the remote turrets by default. Then behind that, we have the escape pod room four escape pods, four crew. And then behind that, we have the traversal. It's sort of a traversal room. It has a lift, goes between the two floors of the ship and goes to the exterior of the ship. And then a ladder for emergency backup. Behind that is the mess hall area. So nice shared communal space for you to relax with your crew. And then we move into the four individual crew rooms, each with a double bed, so very luxurious for a spaceship, en suites for all. Uh, at the rear of this section, we have a further two lifts. These are just internal to go between the two decks of the ship. Then at the rear, we have the main engineering. So there are some components dotted around throughout the rest of the ship, but the bulk of your components and the engineering terminal are here at the rear of the ship. So that's upstairs. Let's go downstairs a little bit. We have the main vehicle entrance and cargo entrance. Uh, for the rear section, uh, this can be used as a garage, but it is also a cargo hold. Can fit vehicles up to an Ursa rover in size in here. And then on the max, we have, as you saw in the trailer, uh, the two, it's sort of one cargo lift that drops down, but it retains a walkway throughout the center of the ship. So regardless of whether your cargo is up, down, being loaded, you still have traversal front to back of the ship. Then we have the downstairs of the traversal room, which also features the airlock onto, onto the ship. And then lastly, we have the armory at the front of the ship. So if you're coming on board, leaving via EVA, leaving via that front entrance to the ground, you can stop off here, suit up, get your weapons, do the reverse coming back. And that is the Starlancer Max. So we'll quickly recap the stats, 224 SU of cargo, uh, 128 on that ventral drop platform, 96 in the rear cargo area, it has six extra VTOL thrusters uh, for all that extra mass that it's hauling, and it is available to pre-order now and will be flyable this IE uh, at play.se play .se, max. and if you uh, pre-order now before IE, you will get this exclusive sapphire paint which is in the citizen col colors and looks super cool in my opinion. So, we have talked small drones, medium drones, large drones. What about bigger things? So, who can guess what that is? So, I, I talked to you all quite some time ago about this in Germany. Uh, and this is obviously the original concept for the Pioneer. Now, some time has passed, and whilst the core concepts of base building have remained the same at a high level, how you physically build your bases has changed slightly. So 
back then, you were building everything on board the ship here. You would fly your Pioneer, you'd, this is the area I want to build in, I'm going to build my base on board the ship, and I'm going to drop it down. Now, as you've seen, bases are a lot more expansive now. This doesn't work anymore. So we need to do a little bit of some reconcepting. OK, so one of the first things we really wanted to kind of solve was, was the arm. Um, you know, we know a lot more about how we're going to be constructing these structures now. And kind of the arm didn't really make a lot of sense anymore. All, all it really did was um, it made the space you need to land the ship almost twice as big as what it, it's kind of needed. And you know, we're not real spaceship engineers. We don't, we don't make real spaceships. Um, but what, what we do try and do a lot of the time is we try and take as much reference from kind of real life manufacturing as we possibly can. And I think that's really, um, it's really key to what I think Star Citizen is as, as a whole across like all the different departments in that you know, we're trying to make a, a believable universe. And if you think about the arm, and whilst I can't deny it's a cool idea, um, I think, really, from, from a, a, a manufacturing point of view, all it really does is it adds a lot of complication and a lot of manufacturing costs onto what is already a very advanced, very large, very costly ship to make. Um, so that was kind of like one of the, the kind of real first things we wanted to do. The second thing we wanted to look at was kind of um, have a little bit of a, a shift around of kind of like the egress points on the ship. Um, we, we, the cargo position has moved, so we needed to kind of update that. Um, we wanted to make sure that the, the landing pad made sense and had space to kind of come into the ship. And then we also needed a way of getting things out of the ship that we will be crafting. Um, on top of that, we had a few other goals. Um, like I say, it needs to support the, all the updated kind of building mechanics. It needs to support all our current metrics. And I don't mean just character metrics, I mean all metrics, because we're going to be creating a lot of things inside this ship. Uh, we wanted it to kind of become a, a true um, self-sustained mobile base. We wanted it to kind of you know, be, um, be kind of like the cornerstone of your crafting and construction, construction ventures. And to do that, we needed to add a few extra kind of onboard facilities. So you know, a med bay, um, like I say, the crafting area, the ability to refine and or extract and refine materials. So let's have a quick look over the updated interior of the Pioneer. So at the back of the ship, we have the classic bridge, looks out over the expanse of the ship. Uh, and then top and bottom of that in this image, we have the escape pod rooms. And then leading off those is the access to the manned turrets that remain. Then going downstairs, we have the cargo uh, area at the top. Doesn't look like a lot. That's 1,000 SEU of cargo now in that space. <laughs> Next to that is the fabrication uh, control room. Uh, this is where you'll be controlling, fabricating larger vehicles and ships, as well as smaller fabrication machines next door for. You don't want to use this to build a small FPS weapon. It's a bit overkill. So we have that on board as well. In the center of the ship, we have a small fabrication hangar with roof and ramp egress. So if you're building a small ship on board, so things like a Nomad, you can build on board here. You'll be able to fly out the roof of the fabrication hangar. And then we have the existing small landing pad that transitions from outside the ship to inside the ship. So cargo, you can load via a new entrance that Ben's going to talk about in a second but you can still retain the ability to land a ship on top of this ship, move it inside your ship, all those things. Uh, engineering at the rear, this is now capital components all the way around. It was a weird mix of size threes before. It's now just all capital everything. Then we have the habitation, uh, mess hall, medical area between the hangar and engineering. And then at the front, we have four extra large drones in the drone room. Um, but we don't just have some pictures like this to show you. Ben's going to go through this in a bit more detail now. OK, yeah, so we're going to have a little look at kind of like the concept and where it's at on the interior. We start out on the, you know, the interior bridge. It's very spacious, or command deck bridge, whatever you want to call it. It gives kind of really nice views out over the front of the ship. And up right up front, you've got all the uh, consoles required that you need to kind of control the ship. 
as well as the kind of additional remote turret access consoles. And then at the rear, we have the main kind of navigation components and some small um, engineering consoles. And kind of flanking either side, we've got these two corridors, and they lead out to uh, the manned turrets that kind of sit above the bridge. And they also have all the escape pods needed um, for all the bridge crew. Like I say, we want this to kind of be a home away from home, so we have a very large, uh, comfortable habitation area. Each of the crew members, they get their own individual crew pod. And one of the nice things about this is these actually open up and they allow kind of each crew member to kind of decide like how much privacy they actually want. This is the crafting area. We've got the four kind of crafting machines. And these are right next to the, the cargo bay, the internal cargo bay. And as John says, this holds up to you know, 1,000 SEU of cargo, so it's pretty sizable. To make it a little bit easier, it's got its own dedicated cargo lift at the back that, again, just kind of just simplifies that kind of getting cargo in and out of the vehicle. Down at the front, we have the drone room. Now, these will be four extra large drones, so they'll be able to craft our, you know, our largest structures in game. They exit the ship out through the roof, and they're all controlled by the construction console in this area. And finally, we're just going to take a, a quick look at the crafting area on the ship. So you can see here, we've got these blast shields down that kind of protect the crew in this area from what's going on in, inside. And then as these open up, we've just, we just finished making a storm. And as, you know, as we see, there's a ramp that leads out. So you can drive any ground vehicle straight out the front. You know, between all the landing gear, and you get this really nice kind of like sense of scale as you're driving underneath out the front of the ship. And we've also got the, the top exit for any flight vehicles. And then finally, we have the, the landing pad. And this just you know, allows us for any ships that land up on deck, we can just bring them down into the belly of the ship. So that's the Pioneer. It's had quite the glow up over the years. Holds four extra large drones. Uh, and if you're interested in finding out what extra large drones can build, I highly recommend sticking around for the next presentation. Uh, it's about 20% bigger. I know the jokes, we always make ships bigger, but to fit all that in, it needed it. It can craft small ships and vehicles. And one thing we didn't show in that video is the landing gear actually have integrated ground resource extractors in. So when you find your plot, you land your ship, and you can start extracting the resources from it. <laughs> Capital components all round. And now it has 1,000 SU of cargo capacity. Uh, that, now the bad news, when base building comes out, this will not be there day one of it. But we are starting this in the next week or two, so it is in production very soon. So, to finish up, we'll do the classic one last thing. CisenCon is usually about looking forwards, but we'll do some housekeeping and look at the now and a bit before. So, oh, sorry, this is Ben. <laughs> yeah, so you remember last year, we kind of, we, we teased these 10 vehicle silhouettes. Um, now, these are vehicles that we were you know, planning on working on this year, and we've not quite delivered all of them yet this year. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we, we did come quite close. Um, so, so far we've delivered six. We've delivered the Pulse, the X1, uh, the Medvac, the Argo and PUV-1T, the RSI Zeus, and the rework on the Retaliator. Oh, but what about the rest? Sorry. So, all but one of these will be, will be released before the end of the year. So, the Legionnaire is the one that's going to miss out. And that's because we want to align it with hacking gameplay. Um, but the rest will be here before the, the end of the year. So, Crusader Intrepid, Mariah Guardian, and the Polaris. So... We have a few patches between where I am today standing on stage and the end of the year. But let's start with some things that you're going to see at IE.
So on top of those, those ships we've, we've talked about, um, we also worked on a number of other ships this year. So we're just going to quickly go through them before we get on to what we're doing next. So we delivered the Sulen, the Storm, the Cutter Rambler, the F7A and F7C Mark IIs. So I always get tongue twisted with these. And the F7A Mark Is. Then we also did the Santok EI, the Sabre Firebird, the Peregrine, and then most recently, the Argo Atlas. So, like last year, where we did a little tease, can't, can't just leave without teasing a little bit more. So, <laughs> let's have a quick look at just some, emphasis on some, of the vehicles that we're working on in the next 12 months. I just want to say a big thank you to all of you and a big thank you to all the vehicle team in all the studios around the globe. They give us all this really cool stuff that we can get to stand on stage and talk to you guys about. Some of them are probably hiding at the back, but I just want to say a big thank you to you all, especially for all the hard work on these recent ships. Yeah. Massive, massive thank you to everyone involved in putting these vehicles together. Right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That was awesome, you guys. I swear some of those silhouettes looked a little familiar. Let's give it up one more time for the vehicle team. Let's hear it for the vehicle team, everybody. Woo!